Hey everybody, I'm Yori Chisholm. In this video, I'll show you how to get started with the Piper's Metronome app and go over some of the features that make it the number one metronome for pipers and also for drummers who play with pipers. We'll talk about how to find and set your perfect tempo using the Smart Presets feature, which are easy to use pre-programmed settings for every type of pipe tune and one tap speed levels. We'll look at pulsing and rhythm settings, which can help you achieve the perfect musical expression for tune types like 2-4 marches, Strathspeys, and reels. I'll show you how to build, save, and share custom sets like MSRs, medleys, or any other combination of tunes with different tempos and styles. And how to add an introduction, such as a pipe band style attack, and fully customize the transitions between your tunes. And I'll show you how to save all of your sets and share them with your friends and bandmates in a single click. I recommend you grab your phone or tablet right now and go to pipersmetronome.com, which has links to the app stores for both Apple and Android. This video you're about to see was recorded in a live group class I did with members of my bagpipelessons.com inner circle. Membership in my inner circle gives you complete access to the best of everything at bagpipelessons.com. Weekly, live, and interactive online classes for pipers of all levels with me and world champion guest instructors. Access to my exclusive lesson library with hundreds of hours of lessons on nearly every piping topic. And personalized support from me to help you reach your piping goals. For more about the Inner Circle, please visit bagpipelessons.com slash membership. All right, so here's our basic screen. You know, for the screen, you, what you're familiar with, you got the, um, this, the ring here represents a bar, right? So I'm, we're in 2-4 March, so this is gonna be a bar. There's two beats. If we go to 3-4 March, it's going to be three. So um, nine, eight, it's going to be three. Strass Bay, four beats per bar. It's going to be there. So that's kind of a nice thing. You get to see in a, a one ring is going to be an, uh, an entire bar. So if we go, so we're still in Strass Bay. And what Randall was asking about was this rhythm button. So down here on the left column on the second row down it's rhythm and what that is is that are different sort of rhythmic groupings that you might have in a tune so for stress bay we just have none which would be just only the beats and that's marked as a quarter note because that would be you know that's a little slow there we go so there's our four beats now, if we turn on the, the other rhythm, now we have a dot cut eighth note. All right. So there are other rhythms in Strath's phase. For example, we could have the reversed dot cut. There are also sometimes, infrequently, we have triplets. Now, I know that there are every rhythm that you could have in a tune is not in here. But what we tried to do is have the the most common rhythms in a tune. So that's what we have for 6-8. Now, if, when we do an update, I do want to add some of these other rhythms in. So let's go to 2-4 March. So now here we have a lot of different options for 2-4s. Again, the, the, the basic one, if we have no, sub, no, no added rhythm, it's just the quarter note. So that sounds like this. Just our two beats per bar. If we add in a dot cut, we could also add in two eighth notes. Sort of the offbeat situation there. Now, a lot of our two fours have that, 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 you know, Drunken Piper, uh, Jolly Beggarman, they have this, this, this dot cut 16th pattern. And that's this. So there's another rhythm in here, which would be four sixteenths. Now this is even. This is not something we normally have in a two four march, you know, because our typically our two four marches are dot cut style, so we don't have that. But that's just added in there. Um, 
No, question, Yuri. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so on the two four, like you know, I played the Royal Scots Polka for the member video. Uh, so what rhythm is there? A rhythm there for say Royal Scots Polka? Yeah. So you have a choice. You know. So you have options. So you may um, you may just be happy with this. This would be a basic. You know, two four. You're getting your beats. So let's pull up the music here. So Royal Scots Polka goes So the most basic would be to just do the the the, the two beats with no extra rhythm. Da, 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 da. That's a little fast. Let's slow it down. Now that's gonna if you're playing with that metronome, that's gonna and you're doing it properly, well the the first note of every beat will be lined up with the metronome. But there's a lot of stuff happening in between the beats. So we could say, well, I'm gonna also I'm gonna add in my eighth notes. So now so now we're getting the beats and the offbeat. So that would be equivalent to um, this is the start of a beat here, and then this would be the start of the second half of that beat, which would be if there are two eighth notes, it'd be the, it'd be an eighth note, right? So that's what that's there for. So now we now you can really pay attention to your beats and your off beats. But maybe you really want to work on your dot cut. So maybe you want to add in the all these 16th notes and dot. Right? So dun da dun da da. That's the exact rhythm there. The dot cut, dot cut, dot cut, dot cut. Right. So if you were to put this on, a lot of these cut notes are going to be irrelevant to a lot of the tune, right? But this is just an underline that but it's going it's going under there. So you could use this and play through the whole tune. You just have to ignore the clicks that aren't applicable to certain parts of the tune. Does that make sense? Yeah. So one thing that people have told me they find really valuable about the app is to really hear what that rhythm is supposed to sound like, you know, cause you look at that, that you look at a group of four notes in a, in a two, four and you see dot cuts. And often the question is, well, like, how long do I hold the dots? How short do I make the cuts? And just trying to get that rhythm into your head. So you could use it playing through the whole tune, or maybe you just do some drills. Maybe you just work on those dot cut 16th patterns with this going. And then when you go back to play the whole tune, maybe you just um, just put in your beats and your off beats. Or maybe you just put in just your beats. So there is, um, if you notice on that second row of buttons all the way to the right is the sound button. So the sound button, it lets you change not only the type of sound, if you look at sound pack, we have three different little sound packs, um, but each one of these volumes, each one of these um, little volume sections has a slider. And that's sort of a, um, a can be a useful feature. So let's go back and talk about what that would be. So here's our main beat. That's what you're marching to, right? Da, 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 da. That's the beat. But then we say we want to do some offbeat now. But we want, it has a different sound of the beat versus the offbeat. But maybe we want that beat to be a little bit louder and that eighth note offbeat to be a little bit quieter. And we can do that by just going to the sound and turn down the rhythm volume. So it's a little bit quieter. Still there, but just helps you with your ear 
distinguish between the two. Okay. That makes sense. There's this concept in psychology of so you can sort of like fade it out or you can fade it in and maybe you can just fade it out a little bit so it's not quite as strong a, of, of a sound. There's also right in the middle, there's a button called accents. And what accents let you do is put a different sound on certain beats. So here we have our two beats, we have our off beats, but maybe we want the first beat of each bar, which is the left foot, to have a slightly different sound than the right foot. Well, we can do that. You just, we can turn, turn on the accent for the beat one only. Whoops. One, two, one, two. just sort of helps you again it just helps you see where you are in the tune that might be real helpful in a stress bay if you go to stress bays or four four maybe i want to have an accent on the first and third beats just having that we haven't done anything with the timing of pulsing or anything, but just have that different sound can help you figure out where you are musically, right? So again, we have the accents button. Um, it's just accenting every the first downbeat. And then we have our volume where we can turn down sort of play around with these sliders. Okay. Uh, so if we go back to these, let's go back to our 2-4 march, and we have our different rhythmic groupings that we've been talking about here. Now, if we go and we go, okay, well, we're no longer going to work on our 2-4, we want to work on our 6-8. So we go to 6-8. And now we go to our rhythms totally different. We don't have all those dot cuts. We don't have all those 16th notes. It's because those rhythmic patterns do not exist in a 6-8. So in their 6-8 marches, we 6-8s are, you know, 6-8 means 6 eighth notes per bar. So we could put on our 3 eighths, and there you go. Here's your 6 eighth notes. Um, Now that right there, those three even eighth notes is not something that we see in a six eight march. That is something that we would see in a jig, right? Da, 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 da. In a six eight march, we tend to have more of a dot cut pattern. But what you can use for the six eight march is you use the quarter eighth. This is what I would use. <laughs> That's the key rhythm that you want for doing your six eight marches. Again, the six eight marches, sometimes you have a, a triplet with a dot on the first note. Sometimes you have a triplet with a dot on the second note. But the third note of a six eight is always going to be this regular eighth note. So either you're going to have a dot and a cut and then your eighth note down here, or you're going to have a cut and then a dot and then your eighth note down here. But if you can get this into your, you know, if you can, if you can get locked into this rhythm, you can play any six eight march and it'll sound right with this quarter eighth note pattern. It's all about that quarter eighth pattern. Does that help, Randall? Good. Yeah, I think when we do an update to the app, probably one of the most, um, the most requested rhythm rhythm to add would be that six eight rhythm. If we could just take that, add one more triplet here instead of just the three even eighths, but to actually go to um, having the, the dot cut and then eighth note. So can we, in 
uh, say, Donald McLean of Lewis, uh, yeah, third part, uh, third part where it reverses, you go to that, you go um, cut dot instead of dot right. cut. Right. So you, ju you just ignore, so obviously you ignore that rhythm setting in that. Yeah, right. Yeah, so again, the, the you're right. So the metronome is not going to, if you put in all, it, the more specific of the rhythm that you add in with the metronome, the more likely it is that it's not going to match the entire tune. If you just do the beat, you're going to be fine. If you just do the beats and the off beats, you're going to be fine. In a six, eight, if you do this quarter eighth, you're fine. But as soon as you start adding in other more particular rhythmic groupings, it's not always going to match. So you just ignore it, you know? Um, At a certain point, you just have to, you know, it stops being a metronome. If you wanted to program in the entire tune to just have it play for you, it's not really a metronome anymore. You know, it's sort of a, and that's been a request. Well, how can you know, I want to do a, a dot cut and then a cut dot, and then I want just a beat. It's like, well, okay, now it's just like a, it's another type of uh, function, right? Um, but that's a good point. Dun, 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 okay, so I hope that answers your question about the rhythm. So if you just go through and you look at your different tune types, you'll see there are different options. You know, in a stress bay, we just have the dot cut. If you go to a reel, we've got the dot cut. We've got the quarter note. We've got eight, even eighth notes. So different options depending on the type of tune. Yeah, hornpipes, we have just like two, four marches. We have the dot cuts for our dot cut style hornpipes. And then we have the even ones for our, the round style. So, you know, this would be a. An even style hornpipe or the dot cut. Right, so that more lilty traditional dot cut style hornpipe. So you would just want to pick the one that matches your tune. Great. Okay, so now let's take a look at what pulsing is. So we talked about we've talked about stress bays here. And we even did that. So a stress bay is a tune type that's in 4-4. And one of the primary features rhythmically of stress bays is this dot cut. You can really hear that quickness of that short note. So a stress phase in 4-4, four, four. if we look at a 4-4 four, four march, look at all these different rhythmic patterns that we can have. One of them is two eighth notes, because an eighth note is half of a quarter note. So you can have two eighth notes in a 4-4 four, four march. If we go to stress bay, we don't have that option anymore. And the reason I don't have the option in the app is because there are no even eighth notes in stress bass. All there are are quarter notes, which would get a whole beat, or dots and cuts where you have long and short. So you'll so that's the that is the primary rhythmic feature of a stress bay. You know, if I was talking to someone who was a an experienced or a professional musician but didn't know anything about bagpipes, and I was going to explain stress bass to them, I would say. It's a type of bagpipe tune that's in 4-4. Four, four. The primary rhythmic feature is a really strong dot cut where the short notes are really, really short. The tempo is fast. Um, there's a lot of technique. There's lots of doublings and GDEs and stuff crammed in there. So it's technically very demanding. And then the final thing that, that makes a stress bay well, challenging, but what's sort of unique about it is we do this 
lengthening of the first and third beat and a little bit of a shortening of the second and fourth beat. And we call that pulsing. So if I turn off my dot cut, here we have our four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But when we add the pulsing, so it says pulse off, and I'm going to add in a heavy amount of pulsing. You hear a slight difference there? I'll do a little bit more. I'll go to level eight. Now you can really hear that, right? I can, I can only hear the the um, tapping when you're speaking for some reason. Maybe nobody oh, else has that. Maybe it's it cuts computer. out. Let me see if I can fix that. Now, let me turn on my original sound. Is that better? So you can hear that. So without the pulsing, we're here. Four equal beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Turn on some pulsing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four. So what we've done is we've lengthened. If you look where that little number two is and the number four, they used to be right on the sides and now they've been shifted over. So I've made beat number one, which is the space from the number one to the number two lengthened, but the three stays in the same spot. So now that two came down a little bit, the distance from two to three is shorter. So what we're doing is we're making our beats of unequal lengths in the pattern of first beat slightly longer, second beat a little bit shorter by the same amount, third beat a little bit longer, fourth beat a little bit shorter by the same amount, and that's pulsing. And that's a feature of stress bass. That's what we do. We, we, do that, we do that heavy thing. So what that means in terms of how we play is that instead of going... Um, We go, we stretch those out and it has nothing to do with the dot cut. We're actually just lengthening certain beats over other beats. We're lengthening every other beat. So instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, we go one, two, three, four, one two, three, four, a longer beat mixed with a shorter beat. And that's what pulsing is. So that, if you want to know what are the unique things about Strath's Bays to express them properly, it's make sure your dot cut is really strong. Make sure those short notes are really short and then do a lot of pulsing on the first and third beat. Sometimes people talk about that strong, weak, medium, weak idea. Uh, and if you've ever heard that, people are talking about stress bass and they're giving each of those four uh, beats. They're saying the first one is strong, the second one is weak. Well, what we have here is I've described it as longer and a little bit shorter. And they say that the third beat is medium and then the fourth one's weak again. I actually think that that third one is as strong as the first one. So just focus on a strong first and third beat by lengthening the note and slightly compressing the, the second one. And the metronome will do that for you. If you want to practice it and really try to be really strong and, and confident with it, or maybe you're just having a hard time getting that pulsing feel into your head, go really strong. Make it like a level eight. Now, that's stronger than you would play. If you played that for a, a knowledgeable person, they would say, whoa, it's a little overdoing it. But often overdoing it is really, really helpful for learning. Just, just to try to get it into your head, right? Um, so what's a good default you know, 
uh, pulsing for a stretch by. I think a good level is some. I think around seven is good. Yeah, I think if you go a little, if you go less, it's it's maybe too subtle. So I'm always shooting for about a seven. I think that's about the right level. Um, and before I, when I was working on the app, I put, I started asking people like, what do you call that thing? You know, what I, what we call pulsing. There's a lot of different, some people call it pointing. Some people call it agogic stress, I think is the musical theory term for it. So there's, there's different terms for it, but eventually I, I settled on pulsing. I think that that's the, the clearest word because it's distinct from pointing. Although some people use pointing to refer to this. Some people also use pointing to, re to describe the dot cut. So I don't use that term. Um, because it's, you know, you get a sheet from a judge that says Stras Bay could use more pointing. You don't actually know if they mean that you need to cut your short notes more or if you need to stretch out your long beats more because they're different things. And I'll show you um, exactly how they're different. So I'll turn my pulsing off. So now I have four equal beats and I'll put, turn on the dot cut. Now I'm going to put the pulsing back on and I want you to look at the lengths of those short notes and listen for the lengths of the cut notes. So did you notice anything about the, those short notes when I changed the amount of pulsing? To me, they sounded the same. That's exactly right. Yeah, they're exactly the same. So the short notes are always really short and they don't change depending on if, how much pulsing you add. Which is kind of amazing. And I've had discussions with people who say that that's mathematically impossible to do that. It's not because this long note here it's a dotted note, but it's also a pulsed note. So it, it's without the pulsing, it's just a normal dotted note. And the way I can make that that note longer without affecting the short note is by actually changing the length of the beat. I slide that number two slides down so that it, the whole, the whole beat gets longer. It's not, and, and this is a lot of people, they, 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 if they play, if they play stress bays into you can play them intuitively well and not understand the theory behind it. Like a native speaker of a language, you don't know the rules of English because you just learned it as your mother tongue. Um, but if you really understand the music theory, you'll see that, ah, pulsing and dot cut are different. And I, if, if you keep all your beats equal lengths, well, then you would have to make the note shorter to accommodate a longer note before it. But if you make the beats unequal lengths, it works out. So that's this idea of there are two separate things going on to play a Strass Bay properly. Yes, you got to make all your cut notes really cut. Yes, that's like the foundation of it. That's where you spend probably most of your time trying to learn your tune and to really cut those cut notes and keep all your technique clean and get it up fast. And the final step is going to be do a little bit extra stretching on your first and third beats to really bring that out. Good. Okay. Let's talk about putting together some sets here. So I'll give an example here and then we will um, maybe Joby, we can look at one of your one of your um, one of your examples here. So a classic thing that pipers want to do is they want to put together sets and maybe the most common set that you see in a lot of places would be a March stress bay and real, right? So the first thing that you need to do if you're going to put together a set 
or maybe you already have a set, is you need to figure out what are you doing. So you, you need to figure out exactly what you're doing so then you can program it into the app. If you don't, if you're putting together a new set and you don't really know what you want to do yet, I'll, I'll give you a suggestion here, but the app needs to be, the app doesn't go by feel, it goes by numbers of beats and numbers of bars and it's, it's mathematical, right? So you want to figure out what you're doing. So a common, this is how I would, uh, let me share my screen differently here. Okay, so here, this is the last two bars of a 2-4 march. This is the Athol and Bredalbin gathering. And then this is the first two, this is the first bar of Caledonian Canal. So this is a set that I, you know, played and have taught people. So the Athol and Bredalbin goes something like... Um, So what I did there, I just got to the end of the, I got to the end of the thing here, and I just played that burl, and I just held it out, and then when I was ready, I started my stress bay, right? Now, if you want to just do that, that's fine, but the metronome isn't going to help you with just holding it out a, a sort of random amount of time that you're doing it by feel. Now, typically, maybe you want to get, maybe you're having a hard time figuring out the, the right length of that time. So you want to use the metronome to figure out and then build consistency and then help you sort of internalize that perfect break. Or maybe you're working in a band. And in a band, you absolutely want to have the breaks metered out because you have a Lot, bunch of people that all need to be on exactly the same page. So what you want to figure out in a group is like, okay, well, what are we doing on the break? And that's always the first question that I ask when I'm at band practice or teaching a workshop and we're working on a break that's a mess, which is like, what are we actually doing here? And it's amazing how often people don't know. They're like, oh, I think it's two beats. No, I think it's four. Well, we used to do this. And then, so you got to figure out exactly what you're doing. So I'm going to show you what my favorite break is. My favorite break is to, and this actually, I didn't invent this. This is really common. And what we're going to do is we have, we're going to hold this note here for some length of time. And the amount of time that we're going to hold that note is usually two beats. Doesn't have to be, it could be four, but typically I'll do two. And I'm gonna start that, this is, this is what we call the break. This is actually the, the, the piece in between the two tunes is holding the last note of the first tune for a certain number of beats before I start the next tune. I'm gonna do two beats. And it's actually going to start, my two beats actually start right on that embellishment. Okay, so that's the start of the break. Now, what tempo am I going to use for those two beats? Am I going to use the, am I going to continue my march tempo for two extra beats and then start the stress bay? Or are my two extra beats in Strath's Bay time? Now this is the last, I'm saying that instead of playing the last note, instead of playing that low A, which is the last note of the march, I'm actually gonna play two beats of break. But what tempo am I gonna use? What do you think? We usually, it's the tempo of whatever you're going into. It would be the second tune, right. Mm -hmm. So this is actually going to be in stress bay time. And again, if you're playing on your own, you can do whatever you want, or you I should say you have more flexibility 
and you don't have to coordinate when you're playing with other people. It's like, not only do you all have to know what you're doing, but you have to find a way to sort of like actually play it together every time. And the best way to do that is for the break to be in the tempo of the tune that you are transitioning to. So these two are going to be in stress bay time. Okay, not March time. If we did it in March time, it would go like something like this. Da 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 And the first time we have stress bay tempo, we're already playing. If we do it the break in stress bay time, it goes like this. And that's way better because you're just holding low A and your pipe major is giving you a count in with his or her foot so that by the time you actually get to the first note of the tune, you've already heard two beats. One, two, right? So if we're gonna play together, you know, say we're all at band practice together and we say, okay, we're gonna play, we're gonna start the stress bay. Everybody blow your pipes up and I'm gonna count you in. Well, I'm gonna count you in in stress bay time. I'm not gonna count you in in some other random time. That would be pointless, right? So it's just like the conductor gets the baton and they're like, okay, are we ready? Boom, they give you the, you know, I don't know how many beats the conductor does, but they usually have some way of signaling what your tempo is going to so that when we actually all play together, it works. So that's what I would do is I would say, take our um, last note of the march, it's gone in a way. Now we're still playing low A, which is the note, the last note, but in terms of the march tempo, it ends right there. So the last beat of that bar, that last beat of the march tune, is no longer in march time. We are now trans transitioning to stress bay time. Does that make sense? I always do that if I can when I'm when I'm working with the band. That's the way to do it. It's much better than continuing with the march tempo. That's basically pointless. And it's much, much better than just stopping and waiting, right? And then just, you know, sometimes you'll see that it's just wait and then the big foot comes down and you hope that people can get on the same page. Okay, so now we got to figure out what we're going to do in the app. So there's a couple things that we need to know. We need to know our tempo for our march. We need to know the tempo for our stress bay. We've, we need to know the number of beats that we are going to use for the break. That is two. And we need to know when the break is going to start. And we have, because it's starting here, we are starting one beat. We're, we're chopping off one beat of the march. We're not playing all the way to the end of the march and then starting our break. We're actually, we've removed the final beat of the march and replaced it with our two beats of stress bay. And that's important to know because we need to program, program that into the app. So let me go back to my phone. Okay, so we're going to go to 2 4 March. So, if we're going to start programming breaks into here, we're going to go into the advanced mode of the app. So, if you look at the top, it says basic and advanced. We've just been in basic mode this whole time, and basic mode allows you to do everything we've done so far tempos, pulsing, rhythms, volumes, all that stuff, different time signatures. But in basic mode, if you click play, it just plays for forever until your phone dies of battery. But what the advanced mode does is it allows you to actually create tunes and sets of tunes. So it's not just going to click at 
63 beats per minute for forever, but it's going to click for a certain number of bars or, or parts or whatever. So we're going to go save, and we're going to call this, what are we going to call it? Well, we'll call it MSR for the inner circle. How about that? Twenty twenty one. Always putting dates on things. Okay. Now nothing's changed yet, but we just gave it a name. Now I'm going to go to edit. Bang. So this edit screen is just it's like it's sort of like in a menu format, but it still has everything that we had on the first screen. It shows that it's a two four march. There's no pulsing, no rhythms, all the sound settings. Now here's what I'm going to do. See that it says create advanced. I'm going to do that. I'm going to click create advanced and watch what happens. Boom. All that stuff that was just there has now been put inside this tune, right? So now it's a set and it has one tune on it. So if we click on that, let's call it, uh, this is Athlon Bredalbin. Okay, so a lot of the stuff at the top is what we already had before. It's a 2-4, we have our beat, we have our pulsing, we have our rhythms, and we have our volumes. But now we get some other stuff. We need to specify how many times are we going to play this tune? Well, usually it's going to be one. How many bars are there in a part of this tune? The metronome knows. You can change it, but it knows that it's a 2-4. It's probably going to be eight bars per part because almost all of our tunes are eight bars per part. If you wrote a weird tune that's got nine bars per part, you can change it to nine, but the default is going to be correct in most cases. It's eight. Do you repeat the parts? Again, the default is it does. It repeats the parts. How many parts are there? You have to specify. In this case, it's a four-parted tune. Okay. Now let's go back. Now we're going to add our second tune. Click add tune. Boom. Now the default setting is that it just clones the first tune. So now it's it's calling it Athlon Bredalbin. We need to change this to Caledonian Canal. Somebody have a question? I'm gonna make it a stress bay. I'm gonna give it a my speed. I'll kind of skip down. Okay. Tune repetitions, only one. We're going to play the tune once. Number of bars per part, eight bars. Repeat parts. It's been automatically turned off because I picked stress bay, because in stress bays we don't repeat the parts. You could enable that if you wanted to. Number of parts, four. Okay? So now if we go back, we're going to do the break here in a second. We go back. Actually, we're going to change our set name to MSR. Um... Okay. Now, whoop. yes, I do want to save that. Save. Okay. So now what you see, there's this new feature here. We've added this sort of stuff down here. What is this? We didn't have that before. So what that is, is that shows you the progress of the set. So you can see it tells you what part you're on. It actually shows you what bar you're on. And it shows you the tune that you're on. You can see at the top there it says the name of the tune. Okay, so far so good. Mm -hmm. And these little tick marks here. So that show that bold line that shows that's the changing of the tune. When this little line pokes out, that shows it's a changing of a part because there's no repeats. You can see four parts. And then in the march, there's four parts, but then there's the little line that doesn't have the little extra pokey bit, and that shows it's the repeat. So first part, first part, second time, second part, second part, second time, and so on, and then change tunes. So all these little things. And you can see if we go here, let's scroll. And as you scroll, you can see the, the bar and the part numbers are changing. So if we go here, now we're in the fourth part, last time through. 
There's no break there yet. It just played all the way to the end of the march and it started the stress bay. So now we're going to go in and we are going to show you how to do the break. Okie dokie. So we go back in at the bottom, we go edit. And we're going to go to the second tune, which is the stress bay. And we scroll down, it says break from previous tune. <laughs> How many, let's go to, let's skip the first one, number of beats. How many beats do we want? We already decided we want two. Two beats. Now, remember I asked you, when does the break start? Because it doesn't, we, we're not playing the entire march anymore. We've removed the last beat of the march to start our break. So that's why if you look here where it says start beat, the plus button is grayed out. You can't add beats, you can only subtract beats. Okay. Minus one. If you, if you leave it at zero, it's going to play that last bar. It's going to play the burl. It's going to play that whole low A of a whole beat of low A. And then it's going to start your two beats of break. We don't want that. We're getting rid of that one last beat. So it's minus one. So if we did this right, it should go. So start of the burl will be stress bay time. So let's see if we did it right. Minus one, plus two, good. And there's a button that says use preceding tune. That's an option in there. But remember, that's the method that I don't recommend. If you said yes, use preceding tune, it's going to keep your break in March time, oh. which we don't want to do. But there may be some cases where you want to do something so we, that's in there for flexibility. But by default, it's use preceding tune is no. All right. So we go back. Click save, over right. So now let's go here. Let's kind of scroll to the last part again. Yep, so it worked exactly right. I'm going to slow the tempo way, 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 way down so we can sort of see what we did there. Um, <coughs> So here's bar seven. This is the second to last bar. It has two beats like normal. Bar eight has one beat because we've removed it. Now here's our break of two beats. Now we start our stress bay. So it actually displays correctly what's exactly happening. Two, four, march. Every bar has two beats, except for we get to the eighth bar, one beat, and then we have a break of two beats and then we're back into 4-4. Four, four. That's exactly how it should work. So that's pretty much my straightforward break that I would recommend for in most cases. You could do the same thing if you're going from a stress bay to a reel. You just figure out. You figure out exactly in your stress bay, last bar. Usually it's the same thing. We just do a minus one because we're cutting off the last beat and two beats going forward. But you may find that, oh, we wanna, you know, sometimes in a slow air, like in a, in a medley in a slow air, like the, the whole last bar is gone. However, the stress bass composed at like the start of that last, lo sometimes you'll just have one note that's the whole bar. And that could be like four beats of jig or something in your medley. So you would actually go Whatever your time signature, however many beats you have in that last bar, you'd go minus that many, and then your number of, of beats there. Does that help? Yeah. 
Um, so one of the things you can do, now there's a default MSR in here, um, and you can actually, you can edit that. It won't let you overwrite the default MSR, but you can play around with the, the brakes or whatever. Another thing you can do is you can create an introduction, right? So, so here, oh, it's not letting me do it. Open. There's our, there's our stress bay in real. So go to edit and click the button that says add intro. So you got a few options. If you want to do the, the normal band introduction, just click band intro and it just creates it. This is the, the default standard globally known um, introduction, which looks like this. Okay. It has a countdown, just like if we were in a band together, I would count out the tempo and I'll go, here we go. And you're gonna see me marching or singing or something. And then I'm gonna call out the command, band by the right, quick march. And then the drummers do their roll. And then on the second drummer's roll, we strike in our drones. And when the drummers finish their second roll, our E's come in and then we start the tune. So that's all programmed in here. So what you can do is take a look up at the, uh, you know, look up here, it's telling you what's happening. Here we go. So it's a count in or a countdown, then the command, then the rolls, then the drones and all that stuff. Here we go. Then you're in your tune. By default, the tempo of the introduction is the tempo of the first tune. There, I can't think of any scenario where you would do anything uh, differently but that. So that's what you got. We go back and try that again. So here we go, ready? One, two, three, four. Band, by the right, quick, march. Bzzz, here we go. Drums. Dun, da, dee, dun, da, dun, da, dun, and then you're you're off and running. Pretty good. So you can program in your whole MSR or your medley, and because you know most of these pipe band performances, they fit that formula of, or that same structure of having a a um, a march in. In fact, most pipe band competitions, that's a, an explicit rule that you have to start with those ro the rolls and the attack and everything. Maybe you have a different kind of a set. Maybe your band's doing a St. Patrick's Day set or a set in a competition that's a little bit different. You can do that. You can get rid of your introduction and you can add a different type of introduction. So it can be a certain number of bars. Mm -hmm. You could say, oh, what we do is we just, uh, you know, we just all strike in our drones together on four counts and then we come in. So you can just pick however many number of bars that you want to do. That's an option. There. Can we edit? Can you edit the um, the intro uh, so you actually come in on a late E after the rolls on the the E on the right? Well, yeah. So you you would just you would just come in on the you just come in on whatever beat, right? Zzz, 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 dee, dee, dee. So you just you would just come in later, but that's something we used to do in the band, which in the SFU band, which is instead of playing E. Everyone's expecting E. Now this is for concerts, not for competition, but instead of hitting the E on the beat, just keep the drones for two more rolls and then just actually bring the chanters in on the first note of the tune. Kind of cool. Probably get you disqualified in a competition, but kind of a cool effect, you know. And come in there. So. That doesn't actually change the timing of what the metronome does. You would just have to remember that, oh, we're coming in a couple beats later, but definitely. Okay, good. So what you wanna do if you are going to, um, whoops, if you, what you're gonna do if you're, if you're gonna create a set is you need to figure out 
what you're doing in the set. You need to figure out like, what is the break? And that process of clarity and specification is really, really good because maybe we don't actually know. Is it two beats? What are we doing? So you want to figure that out and get clear with it. And um, it's going to give you a much better shot at you being really consistent with it. And then also giving, you know, setting things up so that your band has the best opportunity to play it really tightly together. Um, I would say for a lot of bands, it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity to really make things much, much better, which is making sure that the start and the stop and the transitions are solid, really, really good. And from a competitive point of view, um, that's really, really important. And it can really be the difference between a great set and a set that's not that great is how you transition between all your tunes. So mm -hmm. figuring it out, putting it together and um, making it, yeah, just setting, setting yourself up for success here. Finally, there's one more cool feature that I want to show, um, which is you can share. So I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, you can see that this is normally turned off. You turn on shared. Yes, I want to share it. And who do I want to share it with? I can type your email right in there. And any one of your buddies that has the app, they will automatically get it. So put in the email, you can go into your contact list in your phone. Um, You can send an email to the person which will say, hey, I'm sharing you this uh, this thing. And if they don't have the app, then maybe it'll encourage them to get the app. Um, you don't need to send the email. That's not how they actually get it. The way they, they, they will get it automatically in their app. Um, final thing you have to do is you need to go out of here and you need to go back here and it's going to ask you to save. You have to click save. It doesn't actually get shared until you've done the sharing and then you click save. Then it shares it, right? So if I just put your email in there and you would open up the app, you would have it now in your list. And if you go down below, you'll see the ones that people have shared with you and have them by, by their email address. So if I shared it with you, it would come up with your bagpipelessons.com, a list of shared sets, and then you can go in there. So this is really, really good for having a band because one person can make it. And once we agree that this is the right way, it just gets distributed into everyone's app. They pull it up. They know the tempos. They know the tunes. They know the breaks. Everything is fine. And then when you decide, hey, you know what? We're going to scratch that second jig and just, just do the one. Or, we, or we're changing the transition from the slow wear to four beats instead of two. You program it into your app. If you're the owner of that set, click save, and then automatically the changes propagate to everyone's phone once you click save. They can't, if, if, if you're the owner of that set, any changes you make will, once you click save, go to everybody. If you're not the owner of the set, you can't make changes to the match master set. You can make changes to it on your phone, but it's not going to save it for everybody. If you, for your own practice uh, purposes, say, I want to have a slower version of the medley just for my own use, you can do that. You make the changes however you want, and then you click save. It'll just save it under a new name. So it's sort of like you've made a copy of it for yourself, but the master will always be there. Um, yeah. Okay, so Brian, the, the answer to your question is, um, I think the way that you want to do it is you want to share the set with somebody. Maybe you can even share it with yourself. I don't know. Um, but when you share it, it goes into the cloud. We have a cloud data thing that I pay for every month to save all these little metronome sets that people put into the cloud. So 
try that. Take a set. Try sharing it with me, for example, if you want, or share it with yourself, or if you have another email address, try that. Click save, and then go and see if it pops up in your other device. I think that's the way that it works. Because nothing gets uploaded to the cloud, and nothing gets uploaded to the cloud until you share it. So try that and let me know, let me know if that works for you. Yeah, okay. Cool. Just the way that the, the cloud data thing works just to save on data charges for you if you're on a mobile device and also for us for our cloud management, nothing gets uploaded until you do a sharing thing. So once you share it, it should sort of magic uh, automatically appear up there. Great. And can I can I share just a, a single tune? Like if I've got yeah. ask I can I can just yeah. share it to yep. my iPhone. It doesn't yeah. have to be set. Nope. No. So if you go to basic, I mean, you have, to, you have to you have to do something and you have to save it. And once you've saved it, then you go into edit and then you have the option to click the sharing button. Yeah, yeah I'll give it a shot. Cool. Well, you know, it's. Uh, I have a I have a list of a bunch of updates that, you know, once we get around to updating the app, which is um, not a trivial matter, but there's. I have some ideas for sharing. One idea is to have sort of a library that people can access. And if you want to share it with other people, you can have a place where you can find cool sets where you don't actually have to share them individually with people's emails. So there's some potential sort of streamlining that can happen there. But the goal is to make it, you know, have all these features in there to really help you figure out your tunes and master your tunes and especially with the expression side of things bring some sort of clarity to it and then with the band situation to make it as easy as possible to make a, a fully featured totally accurate set and then make it real easy to get it out to people so that's the hope cool well why don't we wrap it up there a great session and as always, if you're watching this and you're it's not live, just post a comment, send a message and we'll uh, we'll get it sorted. But this is great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, really helpful. Fun. Thank you. Great. OK, all the best. We'll yeah, see you next thanks. time. <laughs> Mahalo. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please reach out to me at bagpipelessons.com. There's a contact page there or you can email me at support at bagpipelessons.com. For more information about my inner circle, please visit bagpipelessons.com slash membership. And for the Piper's Metronome app, you can find it on the Apple App Store and on the Android App Store. And both of those links are on pipersmetronome.com. Thanks.